The main idea behind systems thinking is to see that the systems in the building do not work in isolation. Actually, there is not a single system in our universe that works in isolation. Everything is interconnected. In order to effectively understand systems thinking, we need to understand the types of systems. There are two types of systems. The first type is open systems, which are systems that constantly consume other items, use them, and produce waste at the end. A whole city may be an example of this, as it imports food, energy, and products. However, while a city uses products, it also produces wastes in turn, often in the form of sewage, pollution, and solid waste, which consequently marks the end of the system. There are no feedback loops in the open systems. However, in nature, everything is in a loop, and thus no open system exists. Therefore, this is called a closed system, which does not produce any waste product at the end. The system continues independently. Think about the water cycle in our world. The sun heats and evaporates the water on the oceans and the seas, and then creates water vapor. The resulting water vapor rises in air, which condenses into rain and goes back to the Earth's surface. That water then becomes underground water, which again joins the oceans and seas with the flow. This sustainable cycle does not end. Finding ways to develop closed systems in our buildings will result in creating sustainable buildings. In order to establish that, we need to evaluate the individual elements, in addition to their relationships to each other as a whole, when designing our buildings. A decision made for an individual element will have a ripple effect that will affect other elements and systems. Remember the example about installing a proper waterproofing membrane on the building foundation, which affects the foundation, the durability of the whole building, the humidity level inside the building, the HVAC system, and the health of the building occupants. Understanding the emergent properties of systems is also essential in order to better evaluate why we need to form systems. Every system is a composition of its individual parts. Let us take the human body as an example, in which cells form tissues, tissues form organs, organs form the organ systems, and organ systems form humans. A lung is made up of cells. However, having only lung cells together will not do anything. The whole system needs to be there. Certain properties emerge as the result of interaction of individual elements. These are called emergent properties of the systems. And only systems can have emergent properties, not the individuals. The breathing function of the lung is the emergent property of a whole successful system. This is why systems thinking requires the creation of emergent properties to achieve awarding outcomes. To take the discussion to the next level, we will now examine feedback loops, followed by leverage points. Feedback loops refer to the flow of information within a system that allows the system to take action. There are two types of feedback loops in systems, positive and negative. A positive feedback loop can be summarized as A producing B, which in turn produces more of A. An example of this would be an interest-earning savings account. As the account grows, more interest is earned, which in turn brings further account growth. In negative feedback loops, a change brings an additional change in the opposite direction. If a room gets warmer than the set temperature, the thermostat will send a signal to the air conditioning and the air conditioning will stop blowing warm air. Understanding these feedback loops is crucial for designing sustainable buildings and neighborhoods. With the feedback loops providing the flow of information, the system can take action when there's a problem. Since the positive feedback loops don't stop, they may create problems in the systems if they're unchecked. However, if the positive feedback loops are checked with the negative feedback loops, the system can stop if there is too much of something. With the current technology, both feedback loops can be implemented by the use of sensors, controls, building automation systems, and more. A building automation system can show building management the excess energy usage statistics by tracking the individual consumption of all the building systems. Equipped with only this information, 
the building management can then respond and try to discover ways to reduce the energy use. This is called the Prius effect, which means that users can respond to something only if they have real-time information about it. And now we will continue our discussion with leverage points. A small change can yield big changes. In other words, any action taken in a leverage point of the system can bring about significant results in the system. Think about a construction site that is located close to a river, and that river is the main irrigation source of the surrounding farmlands. If the construction site does not take any action to stop sedimentation and pollution resulting from the construction activities, the whole river can then become contaminated. This will then contaminate the farmlands, which will result in contaminated foods. However, by taking action to avoid sedimentation and pollution to the river, which is really a small action when considering the outcome, a whole river can be saved that will also result in saving the farmlands and human health. Being able to see where actions can yield big changes is a very important part of systems thinking. And only by asking questions can project teams thus provide insight to move towards sustainability.